There's nowhere in the world as diverse and culturally vibrant as India. From the beauty of its landmark Taj Mahal to the spirituality of the people, this is a land overflowing with colour and character. It's also a country of vast extremes. I suspect that unlike many of you, I have not been to India, but I am ready for this. I'm ready for the noise, the hustle and bustle. I'm ready to explore this fascinating country. I read that India ignites your curiosity, that it shakes up your senses and leaves your soul feeling warm. Well, we only arrived here yesterday and I can feel that happening already. Over the next three weeks, we're exploring the south of the country on Scenic's Southern India Odyssey, beginning here in Bangalore, the capital city of India's southern state of Karnataka. Known as one of India's most progressive and developed cities, Bangalore still has all the colour and craziness you'd expect from an Indian city. And while the sights and sounds of this fascinating country will shake your senses, so will the tastes. Woo! Piping hot. Yeah, yes, hot. Is everything is here served hot? Mm. Would you eat that with curry? No. On its own. Just as it is. That is so good. My guide tells me the busier the restaurant, the better and fresher the food. And if you want to do as the locals do, ditch the cutlery. Traditionally, Indians bypass the fork in favour of their fingers. Wash your hands cleanly, the hygiene. When you're uh, eating, you should feel what you're eating. That's the trick. Every so, grain of rice. Uh, yes, you have to, <laughs> the fingers should feel what you're eating. Then at the last, you have to lick your fingers. So that's the point why we use hand. This city, and indeed the entire country, is steeped in religion and you'll find temples and shrines on most corners. Bulls are revered in Hindu mythology and the Bull Temple in Bangalore houses one of the largest, built from a single granite rock. So it's a temple to the bull? Yes, this temple is completely dedicated to the Nandi. To put it in a nutshell, it's basically to just to appease the vagrant bulls. What were they doing? Why they were, were they troubling, angry? They were troubling the farmers by eating all the peanut plants. Oh. So the, all the farmers took a pledge. The first horrors of the peanuts will offer to the bull. Oh, thank you. Is this right? Yeah, just on your head. And you just uh, show your hand and to your eyes. What does that do? Just, just like a blessings. Oh from the bull weekends. Ah, oh, beautiful. Despite its population of 12 million, Bangalore is regarded as India's garden city, thanks to its many green spaces. Srinivas, so it's amazing to have such a beautiful and such a large garden right in the heart of the city. Yes, that's, uh, we feel very proud of uh, this particular garden. Lalbagh Botanical Garden began as a private garden back in 1760. And over time, it's grown to become the largest collection of exotic plants anywhere in India. At the centre of the park is the Lalbagh Rock, thought to be one of the oldest rock formations on Earth. Three billion years old. Yeah, it's a three billion year old. Uh, it's a natural formation out of volcanic eruption, and it's a property of the Geological Survey of India. And we can see the whole view of uh, Bengaluru from oh, this rock, yes. the downtown, and all those uh, vertical developments. Isn't that great? The contrast. Yes, exactly. The green part of this, and the concrete jungle on the other side. You'll quickly discover. This is a land of surprises, and just an hour out of Bangalore is a truly unexpected delight. Vipin, when I think of India, I don't necessarily think of vineyards and a wine industry. When did this all begin? 
So the first winery in India was established uh, uh, in 80s and uh, now we are the oldest existing winery of India uh, and of course the most awarded wine company of India. Within India's small but successful wine industry, Grover's Amber wines are regarded as some of the best. We open our sparkling, it's made with the traditional Champagne method. Let's hear it. Ah, oh, beautiful. That is the sound of a party in a bottle. Yep. How do I say cheese in Indian? Just cheese. Just cheers. <laughs> yes, just cheers. Just cheers. So just cheers. 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 <laughs> oh, that is sublime. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz. Oh, that's amazing. Dipin, I've never looked for Indian wines on the menu before, but I'm going to now. Cheers. Cheers. Or as they say in India, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> with the world's second highest population. You expect the chaos and crowds of the big cities, but then by contrast, you can head for the hills and find these beautiful pockets of calm, a world away from the busy streets of Bangalore and with so much natural beauty to offer. Korg is just a couple of hundred kilometres from Bangalore city. It's stop number two on our southern India odyssey with scenic and as well as being known for its lush forests and peaceful surrounds, it's India's home of coffee. India's 40% of coffee is produced in our region. 40% of, of the coffee, coffee comes from here in Korg. Yeah, so that's why this Korg, it is known as Coffee Cup of India. This plantation walk is all part of the experience at the incredible Evolve Back Resort, set on a coffee and spice estate that covers over 160 hectares. Where's the coffee? Look at the beautiful cherries. These are the coffees. Ah. You know, the, once they ripen, they'll be this red, so that our beautiful ladies come over here and they harvest the coffee. Only beautiful ladies Only can beautiful pick the ladies. coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how do you harvest? I have no idea. You know, these ladies, they'll be having a beautiful fingers. The fingertips are very smooth so that they can easily peel off the coffees. Oh, so is so, that why you don't let men do it? Yes, you're right. So would you like to try? Yes. yes. So hold your I hands. I have men's hands though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Look at here. So this <laughs> that is That was not delicate yeah. at all, was it? <laughs> Amjith talks through the process from berry to bean to the final brew. A process, he says, takes many months. It's like art. Oh, makes me want to drink coffee even more. Oh, would you like to taste a cup of coffee? Absolutely. Yes. That's all worth it. Yes. All your work yes. is worth it. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you for waking me up every morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just a short drive north is the small village of Baila Coupe, home to the second largest Tibetan settlement in India, and with this as its centrepiece. Oh, this is so beautiful. Yes, this is one of our uh, India's second largest monastery which is known as Snam Rolling Monastery. Still a functioning monastery today, Nam Drolling is home to thousands of monks and nuns from around the world. Gee, this is so beautiful. Yeah, look at the beautiful uh, structure and the kind of colourful temples. What? So it's really like a university for monks. They yes, come here course. to study, study Buddhism and how to spread peace yes, in the world. Yes, of course, mate. Look at the beautiful statues. How long do the monks stay within these beautiful walls? Actually, these monks, you know, some of them, they come at the age of four. Four? Yes, and they stay up to their lifetime. And they want to study the Buddhism, everything. And here they have their colleges, schooling, everything. What a totally different way of yes, life. Yes, of course. From here, we're off to Kabini and the sister property of our Cork Hotel. Fronting the Kabini River and with a design inspired by local tribal villages, this is a truly special place to spend some time. 
Each private hut has been crafted as a happy marriage of traditional concepts and modern luxury, and most have their own pool. Just a few days in and already we've experienced the chaos of the cities, the coffee cup of India in Korg, and now cocktails in Kabini. And what a beautiful place to toast to our journey so far. Scenic always managed to find these beautiful locations for sunsets so that we can really drink in the magic of the area. Welcome back to Incredible India and our journey with Scenic through the south of the country. Ashan, where's our adventure today? Today we are going to visit a tribal village. Ah, oh, wonderful! We're in Kabini, on the edge of Nagahol National Park, a short safari drive from some of the area's indigenous tribes. So Shan, you live here, so obviously you love it. Yeah. What do you love sharing with your guests about this special part of India? Ah, people, who, the lifestyle, the way they are uh, processing their life from starting to end is quite unbelievable. But what I love is that people here in India just seem generally happy with whatever their lot in life is. Yeah, we love to smile. We love to see people smiling. Native tribal folk known as Kurabas originally lived in the forest as hunter-gatherers and now exist here in these little villages. So, Shan, when I meet your friends... Yes. Is it Namaskara? Yes, you have to say Namaskara. All right, I want to make a good impression. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here goes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Namaskara. Namaskara. She's, Namaskara. She's, she's Potama. <laughs> Can you please thank them for opening up their lovely home for us to have a look through? Yeah, our uh, thanks, El What? <laughs> Oh, she's so beautiful. <laughs> You're the perfect size for hugging too. <laughs> this delightful little lady is Putama, and her and her husband sustain this simple life, farming the land and continuing local traditions. So it takes two days to complete one. Two days? Yes, two days. And when it goes to market, handmade products, right? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love she's so, heckling you. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she does it all the time. This is a hand handcraft product, so it takes uh, at least uh, two to two and a half days to complete the whole process. It's hard to fathom, but after spending time with Putima and her husband, you get the feeling they're incredibly content. <laughs> The song she's singing, what is she singing about? Singing about the, how she's weaving, how she brought the bamboo. She's so happy. Yeah, yeah. The music is the only way where they can connect people. From here to God, or they from here to other people. A short drive up into the hills is a neighbouring tribe who have invited us in for a morning cuppa, Southern Indian style. Tell me, what is jaggery coffee? Yeah, jaggery means a raw sugar. Raw sugar? Yes. Then uh, they put uh, ginger also in it, sometimes pepper also. Oh, it's going to get me going, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that ginger is really strong and it's super sweet. Yeah. Give you lots of energy, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's why it's special. It's very, very spicy. These memorable visits are all part of the scenic experience, all pre-organised and all inclusive. A boat ride across the Kabini River delivers us to the doorstep of the Nagahol National Park, home to the largest concentration of Asiatic elephants in the world. And true to their claim, we've barely entered the park when these cuties come to say hello. I think the calf is about one month old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. It's going to be start to sit With hundreds of hectares of forest land, grassy swamps, streams and rivers, the park is proudly regarded as one of India's most pristine. There, there. The bull, bull, bull. There, there, there. Oh, huge. Can you see that? Wow. Huge. He is a big boy. Beast. 
Depending on the day, you'll find everything from spotted deer to tigers and leopards, but I'm pretty happy with our super close encounter with the elephants. After a few days in the countryside visiting coffee plantations and national parks, our southern India odyssey with Scenic has brought us to one of the cleanest and best planned cities, Mysore, also known as the City of Palaces. It's a quite, quite flat straight away, a more greenery and you cannot see any tall building. Uh, why the reason uh, there is no tall building? Uh, the beauty of the palace will go away and they don't give permission to build a tall building. So nothing can overshadow the palace? Yes. Mysore Palace is the city's proudest possession and one of India's most visited monuments. This is the centrepiece of Mysore city with its rich and fascinating history. Now they won't allow RTV cameras past the entrance to this magnificent palace. However, rest assured that when you travel here with Scenic, you will be able to explore it in all its glory. Mysore Palace may be the heart of the city, but in ancient times, the capital of the empire was 20 kilometers north, and this is the result. That's uh, the great palace, summer palace, what you're seeing in front of you, which was built by the great ruler, Tipu Sultan. This summer residence of the former king was built to commemorate victory. So that's the palace was built in the year 1784 for the memory of his second anglo Mysore war. So he won the battle against the English. So, so celebrating, celebrating, he built yeah. this palace. Yes, yeah, celebrating, he built this palace. It's all covered up, Riku. Yeah, these, uh, the palace is covered up with all the sheets, what you're seeing, to protect the painting from the sun and the rain. It is more than 230 years old. The beauty and intricacy of the works inside have been incredibly well preserved, and the design is believed to be one of the best examples of Indo-Islamic architecture. But for a snapshot of daily life for Mysoreans, Scenic take us on a tour of the century-old Devaraja market. There are about 800 traders in and around the market, and it's as colourful and loud and vibrant as you'd expect a busy Indian marketplace to be. The noise, yeah, shouting and uh, the flowers. Every good and bad starts with the flower. So for weddings, the funerals. Wedding, funeral, for the temple. So it's... So okay. every day they need the flowers day, every, every day, day for the every day. Wow, no wonder this place is bustling. This journey with Scenic is all about experiencing the spirit and culture of this intriguing country. And tonight, we've been given the honour of dining with locals. Hi. Welcome. Oh, you look so beautiful. <laughs> by day, Hey Mama Lena runs a preschool from her home here in Mysore. And by night, she welcomes guests to share her love of Indian food and flavours. Thank you. Oh, wow. So you use this room for the children yes. during the day? Yeah. Served up on a banana leaf, this feast of Indian flavours is Hummer's way of sharing her knowledge and passion for the local cuisine. The eggplant curry? Yes. Mm. In a peanut in sauce. sauce. Yeah. Hey Ma, you have so much on your plate, or should I say banana leaf. <laughs> Why did you choose to open up your home to cook for everybody? Because a lot of people don't cook at home now. They tend to eat out. So, I mean, these are all the things that our grandmothers made for us, my mother made for me, so at least I would want my tradition to go continue. <laughs> 